The next animals to arrive, the black rhinos. These have to be the craziest and most angry of all the animals that ever arrived at Shamwari. These came from the uh, KwaZulu-Natal province of South Africa near Durban. Uh, five great big black rhinos arrived, very, very endangered. Only a couple of thousand left in the country back in the early 90s. And they arrived at Shamwari and were gradually let off the truck one by one. And just listen to this footage, turn up the volume because these things are absolutely crazed. The arrival of the five black runner, two white runner, Shamari. They're now approaching the farmers. They're an amazing species, but they thrive in the Eastern Cape bushveld, and we were very proud to bring them back. We were the first private game reserve in the Eastern Cape to um, purchase and translocate a group of runner to a reserve like ours. So it was another pioneering task for Mantis. So this is a great story on its own. In 2000, it was time to re-establish the pride of lions back in the Eastern Cape now. Bearing in mind they'd all gone, the last roar of the lions had been heard in 1879 and um, we were going to be the pioneers. We couldn't simply put lions back into the reserve in their 90s, only because there wasn't enough food to sustain a pride, but we'd reached a time now where we needed to do this. And the lions were going to come from up north uh, from two reserves. One is the Pilansberg National Park and the other is Madikwe. And um, I, along with a bunch of crew and our vet and our ecologist and a band called Mango Groove that were big in the 90s, accompanied us. And, um, and the, so we flew up to uh, Johannesburg and we got into the aircraft that were going to transport the lines, smaller aircrafts, and we landed at Pilansberg and we loaded the first three lines onto the plane. Now bearing in mind, they don't get crated up. They simply are put to sleep and they lie in the middle of the passage of the plane amongst all the guests and they are dosed up as we go along so the vet has to obviously make sure that they don't wake up because obviously that's going to have serious implications. Um, so we loaded on the first three lines and then we moved on to the next reserve. We flew to Madikwe and we landed at our old military airport which had not been used for many years. There was not a soul there. I was in the middle of the African bush and the next three lines were loaded onto the aircraft. Um, the last one was a big male and everybody pulled him onto the aircraft and next thing the whole aircraft fell onto its bum like this and crushed the back of the plane. And so of course we had to offload our celebrity guests, the band, myself, a bunch of media and Johan the vet and our ecologist John continued with the core team back to Johannesburg where they had to offload all the animals onto a new plane because it was too dangerous to continue with the broken plane and then head off to Shamwari for the release. But of course, Johan started running low on tranquilizer drugs and the lions started waking up in the middle of the airplane and uh, he was really getting nervous and they were pushing and the pilots were going faster and faster to get there in time. And eventually they got to Shamwari in time. They um, got them into their crates as they landed and um, dosed them up and they got in at about six or seven o'clock in the evening. I remember they really cut it fine. Of course, we were sitting on this landing strip in the middle of the African bush up north still, and they sent for another aircraft and uh, we eventually met up with them much later that evening. But uh, it was a sensational story. Then of course, the, the lions are bomed for a period of a month, like we do with the elephants and the rhinos, just to acclimatize them and get them used to the area and um, they are fed through a very clever means. You, you feed the, the meat through a trap door so they can't ever associate with humans feeding them. They don't see you feeding them, so it's all sheltered off. And uh, we attempted to feed them a lot of water in the hope that when they were released, that's all they would eat. Of course, they chose the most expensive of them all and killed a bunch of buffalo. 
Um, but anyway, that's just part and parcel of it all. A month later, all the press arrived again for the big moment and uh, we all sat on a hill overlooking the, uh, the boma that the lions were in and the gates were flung open and the lions walked out into the Eastern Cape Bushveld for the first time since 1879. One of the most special moments of my life and certainly my dad's and the rest of the team. I think it's the only time I've ever seen dad get seriously tipsy and hand out cigars at the celebratory party that night. Mango Groove arrived and they performed the Lion Sleeps tonight. It was a very, very special moment. And of course the whole atmosphere at Shamwari was transformed overnight because suddenly you couldn't just wander around. You know, you had these predators lurking and uh, the, it was just remarkable. One story I remember was um, told to me by Denise Heller recently and uh, a bunch of our workers were repairing damage to roads caused by floods in the game reserve and uh, the only vehicle they were in was a front end loader and all of a sudden the pride of lions arrived and these guys scattered and there was no place for them to hide because all they had was this big front end loader with this little cabin. So Neville Heller, who was responsible for developing Shamwari with Dad, said, guys, climb in the bucket, climb in the bucket. And of course, all these guys climbed in the bucket and they raised it up in the sky and this proud of lions sort of walked right underneath them and disappeared back into the bush. So the atmosphere of the game reserve had changed forever. The roar of the lion had finally returned to the Eastern Cape. The experimenting continued and you know, we thought it was time to reintroduce the wild dogs because the wild dogs had been long since shot out in the Eastern Cape and it would be so amazing to have these dogs back in the wilderness and uh, so we attempted to bring them back and unfortunately the project failed. We just figured out that the reserve wasn't big enough and the wild dogs would use the fence line to almost corner animals and kill them and it was just sort of uh, it, it wasn't right we just needed a vast piece of land to sustain a pack of these dogs um, the year that we had them there was remarkable I mean it was fascinating to see these things uh, running wild on Shamwari and back in Eastern Cape another milestone for us but sadly we had to relocate the dogs to another game reserve here's a clip of how they typically hunted. This clip was filmed by a German couple that had visited Shamari back in the day. And you'll see how they chase this uh, kudu cow into a small dam on the reserve. And this kudu cow in desperation sort of hides in the water. But these dogs are dancing around the dam. And then of course, a hippo is very territorial. A hippo pops up and he's not happy about this and he ends up killing the kudu. So the whole story of Shamwari wasn't just about the big five and all these big mighty animals, it was about the smaller creatures too. So, you know, we went as far as bringing back the little dung beetles um, and also the birds. Uh, there's a particular bird called an oxpecker and they would typically land on the animals and they fed off the ticks. Of course, as soon as cattle were um, introduced to the Eastern Cape, of course, the farming practice was to dip the cattle to get rid of the ticks and the oxpeckers would eat these poison ticks now and they died out. And so um, it was one of our jobs to reintroduce the oxpecker. And I remember these boxes and these little crates filled with oxpeckers arriving at Shamwari and um, the doors opened up and these birds flew off into the open and it was an amazing sight to see. And suddenly they took, they took a bit of a beeline because they saw a bunch of giraffe in the distance and they headed to the giraffe, I think about 50 birds, and the giraffe had never seen oxpeckers. And they ran and they ran and they ran to get away from these, these birds. Anyway, the birds settled in and today there's a very, very healthy population of oxpeckers. So it wasn't just about the big animals, it was about the little ones too. And that is the story of rewilding in the Eastern Cape.